The Academy Finance Program is a two or three year program that sophomores can start or as juniors and continue on throughout their senior year. They can earn up to 17 college credits and they are exposed to many business community leaders as well as field trips, trips to Minneapolis, continuing education. Internship is 200 hours for two college credits. Our students will interview for those positions and it's in any financial or business institute here in Sioux Falls. We love that our students continue their internships uh, throughout college. They also may have received their first career position through the internship opportunities. Uh, our students uh, tend to end up going to a two or four year degree uh, to continue their education in business and we are also finding out many, many success stories through our alumni. And I was looking at like all the different options and I saw this as one and it kind of like I was interested in finance and I thought it would be a good start to see if I liked it or not. Like if I go to college for accounting, it would help. Like I have prior knowledge so it will be easier going into it. I want to go to USC and I want to go for finance. I'm just like feeling around to see what I want to do. It helps you like already know like some of the stuff. And so going into it, you can like decide what you want to do exactly. Oh, you get to meet a lot of new people and it's new experiences. And like this morning at the meeting, I got to meet a ton of different business people. Our students are exposed not only to the business community and how money works and creates a, a business to be successful. It also relates to personal uh, budgets, uh, making smart decisions to improve their credit scores, not to hurt them. Uh, everyday loans for cars to their homes. Our students are getting a wealth of information for their future and to be successful community people as well. It's a good experience and I think it's worth it. Here in the collision repair field at CTE Academy, uh, students start with an intro class and then they move on to more advanced classes in structural repair, non-structural repair, and painting and refinishing. Students learn the basics of and start to finish automotive repair, including bodywork painting, um, buffing, and disassembly of panels, structural repair, which involves the frame of the vehicle. Uh, non-structural repair, which is more complex, dense, and damage, and then they move on to a painting and refinishing class where they get a lot more experience. I'm working on the 67 Mustang right there. I'm currently just doing a whole new uh, body change. I'm maybe changing color, I'll fix a few dents here and there, and the floorboards need repairing, so I might weld a new piece or I might do a whole new floorboard. We have a lot of students that get jobs right out of high school. Um, we do still recommend they go to post-secondary schooling just because that next body shop, if you want to move on, might want to see that degree. But a lot of entry-level part-time jobs are definitely um, attainable by going to CTE Academy. We're a state-of-the-art facility. Uh, we have really, really good equipment. We have up-to-date equipment. Uh, students have access to either as good or better tools and equipment than they would in the industry. So our paint booth is um, top of the line, our frame racks top of the line, even down to just individual tools. We use very nice tools um, so students are getting that real life experience with real life equipment. If you have an interest in cars, if you think auto body might be a uh, program or something you might want to do for a living, uh, come try it out. That's why we're here. Pretty much just being able to work on your own projects, being able to hang out with your friends, and just being able to work on something that you want to do. And I just want to be able to make it look pretty. <laughs> Here at the Automotive Technology, we have four different classes. We have engine performance, 
We have steering and suspension, automotive brakes, and automotive electronics. And we also offer a diesel program. In the engine performance class, students get a chance to uh, disassemble an engine, put it back together so they can understand the, the basics of an engine. They also learn about the six different uh, systems that manage that engine. And throughout this uh, process, they are able to work on their own vehicles. So as we cover, say, spark plugs, they can bring their own vehicles in and work on that. We're the only high school in the actual state that is actually accredited to teach diesel technology. We are linked with concurrent credits with Lake Area Technical College. Tremendous support from the local community, uh, in particular the businesses, the diesel shops around Sioux Falls and that very, very keen to help and support us. They're obviously looking for our best students. We try to get the students, if they're interested in it, um, set up to one of the technical schools. Uh, we also can help them find employment within, uh, within Sioux Falls. Uh, and we do have quite a few students that work at dealerships right in town here, even before they go to, go to their technical schools. I really like engines and I want to do engines in the future. We've completely taken down an engine and rebuilt it and now we're on to systems, so we're doing fuel right now. So we're working at the fuel pump, the fuel filter, fuel tank. Right now we're working on taking apart, cleaning, and putting back together our little uh, two-cylinder Kubota engines. Because when we got them, they weren't running. After high school, I'm going to go to college to be a diesel mechanic. We have uh, all the equipment that a, that a regular garage would have and same with the tools and we always have to update those because the engineers are designing new technology for the cars. Uh, so we're able to keep up with that and the facilities large enough that we can have enough vehicles inside the inside the shop uh, area for students to work on. Huge demand, yeah. The average diesel uh, mechanic in Sioux Falls would be earning seventy five to a hundred thousand a year. I'm more of a hands on learner. So I like being able to go out in the shop, getting my hands dirty and just working. I had no engine experience before this. No one in my family is really a gearhead. No one really knows a lot. I've never grew up working on engines a lot. And it was just in the last couple of years where I'm like, ooh, I can do this. I really like doing this and started messing around with my own vehicle, which is what I'm doing now. Not only to help me in the future with a job, but also just to know what you're doing on the road. Um, that's how it started. It was I took the, the first vehicle class to be like, okay, I don't want to be stuck on the road or at least know the basics like changing the oil and stuff like that where I kind of realized, hey, I'm good at this and I like it. So, And it's really cool to be able to work on your own vehicle and be like, yeah, I did that. the fundamentals of aviation. So they're learning the basic flight principles, they're learning aerodynamics, they learned rocketry and space and NASA information. We've covered history. They'll learn about uh, weather and how airports are designed and laid out so that they can go on to the advanced aviation class which will give them more insight into drones, flight, and mechanics of airplanes and aircraft so that eventually they can go on to other endeavors, which could include flight school or uh, aircraft um, mechanics and or air traffic control. Interest-wise, it's definitely an interesting thing to like get into. You gotta learn before you can just hop in, you know. We did like rockets and like I said we, we, we built up the rockets and then we launched them outside um, but we also did like a paper airplane competition so to speak um, and that was also really fun. It's like a lot of hands-on things so we get to build rockets and go outside and then we have simulators which is uh, on the computer and you like get to steer and all that stuff. This is actually my favorite class because um, we get to do a lot more fun stuff. It's not just taking notes, it's uh, learning history and then you take notes and then you work on like flights. I actually want to be a pilot after I graduate or do Air Force. Our simulators allow them to fly just about every variation of aircraft, including helicopters. We're going to SDSU 
to the aviation department. The kids are going to sit in on a, an actual aviation class. We're also going to be touring the airport so the kids can see if they decide to go to the aviation program up at SDSU, they can see where the kids go to fly. We're also going to be go going to the Air National Guard. They're going to be able to watch a launch of some of the military jets, which will be awesome. We'll be going to tour air traffic control tower so that they can see the pressure situation of being in air traffic control. We'll be checking out some of the private companies so that they can see that it's not just the big airlines. There are smaller places that you can fly for. You can fly corporate air, or there's also the health side of it. Um, so we'll be touring some of those places as well. It's definitely a, a change up to like a normal school day and uh, really, really fun experience. Biomed classes, students are challenged with real world problems to explore the careers in medicine. So they're going to be applying the science that they've learned in their biology and chemistry and anatomy classes to case studies so that they can learn more about what it's like to really work in a medical setting. We are going to give you a solid science foundation that you can apply to your college classes that will help give you a leg up on all the other students. This is a good class to partner with AP classes. If you take AP Biology and AP Chemistry and any one Biomed class, you can end up with a distinction called AP plus PLTW, which is a pretty cool thing to put on your resume. Students that have taken either the biomed courses or the health careers courses in their senior year then have the opportunity to take EMT or emergency medical technician class. It's a semester long class and we will go through certification to become an EMT. So we have um, a rigorous fast paced class as well as there are four Saturdays that are involved where we will go over to Sanford and work in their skills lab where we're practicing with simulations on um, patients assessment, medical and trauma patient assessment. I've always loved science and my dream is to become a nurse anesthetist and this has been really helpful for anything like that. It's taught me about everything health related wise and I've just loved science and it's a lot of labs that are really fun. I took it because I really like science so it really was an eye opener like looking at, at the science side of it and also the medical side of it. But this class is taught really well so it's really an easy class to take and it's fun, like you'll like it and um, I don't know, I feel like it just pushes you, like you can, you'll be able to do it if you want to pursue your um, career in the medical field. As we're learning, you know, about um, setting bones, we're actually then getting the splints out and practicing. As we're learning about um, assessing airway, then we're actually getting those out and, and looking at the intubation, we're looking at the, the skills that they need to do. So it, since it's so hands-on, it makes the, the retention of that skill, of that, of that knowledge, a lot easier because you're actually doing it. It gives you that, that leg up on the other competition going into these programs that you already have this hands-on skill-based knowledge set that your other peers don't have. I have students that are doing all sorts of things once they leave CTE, nursing, pharmacy, um, they're ambitiously trying to get into medical school and I have students that are in medical school right now um, I have kids that go to Southeast Tech and study a medical program there. And any medical major you could think of, you could get some benefit from biomedical sciences. I'd really recommend it if you, you have the passion for science and then if you are just really into medical stuff too. All you have to do is participate and it's fun. Out here at CTE Academy, we have a cabinetry class in which students from the area schools come into. 
In my classes, I always stress to the students to find something that they want for the rest of their life and to challenge themselves to build. So we'll have everything from gun cabinets to, uh, well, ukulele. We've got some guitars going this year. We have bookcases. We have a variety. We had a dresser last year built, end tables, coffee tables. I think it's fun and it's something that I want to do in my future. After high school, um, I want to go into the construction field. I'm looking at construction management if I go to college. If not, I want to get a job right out of high school. In this class, I'm building a toy box for my teacher at school because she has a little kid and wants a toy box. Students design their projects in the class. They get the opportunity to build that and then they take them home with them. We build what the students want out here. They're not little knickknacks. They're, well, you name it, we've built it. The other thing we do is we also uh, hook up with businesses in the area. We go out to Show Place, Dakota Kitchen and Bash, Star Mark, some of those places to show them the opportunities for careers, not only in building cabinets, designing, selling. Uh, this cabinet building is just the trunk of the tree. All the jobs that are connected to the cabinetry area is like all the branches. I like this because I get to build something and I have the pride of knowing that what I'm building, like, is what I want or like what somebody else wants and I get to see it from start to finish. Going into this, not a lot of people think females, this is like their area, but I can guarantee you get into it and you're going to love it because it's, it's different, yes, but you get the freedom and the creativity to do whatever you want and that's what a lot of people don't realize, so I would suggest taking the class. 100 minute class and our biggest complaint out of the students is where'd the time go in that 100 minutes because they're involved and busy and they enjoy the class. Oh yeah, it's a great way to start the day. It kind of makes me sad when I have to leave because I love it so much here. start out the first week safety demonstrations with tools, have the students work with the tools. Then uh, after that we get into uh, the transits and the leveling, uh, leveling the blocks. When the students start here there's nothing here, the houses are gone. Uh, after that we just take the house all the way from nothing to a complete house to sometime in May. I'm in this program to get to know about how to build a house. I'm interested in carpentry. so trying to pursue a field that I might be interested in later after high school. And we do the floor trusses. Uh, from the floor trusses we do the plywood for the floor. Then we build our exterior walls, two by six exterior walls. Uh, like today we're just finishing the interior walls. They're all two by fours. The next step will be uh, put the sheeting on the outside of the house. And then after that we put the rafters on and plywood on top of that, shingle it. The students actually will have a chance to do some plumbing and some electrical in the house. Uh, all the houses are inspected as far as frame inspection, electrical inspection, plumbing inspection, just like a normal contractor we'd go through. Well, we'll have a completely finished house and then we'll have another one right next to it that the other class is working on. Ours is for Habitat for Humanity, so that'll help out people in need. They would be prepared to go on to a, any job site and, and have knowledge to start a job. Uh, most of our students would go on to some furthering education. Probably I will end up going to Mitchell Tech for either that or welding is also another one of my passions, but um, basically I'll use this to get a feel for what goes into a house or what goes into a shed. A lot of the students come to the carpentry program with no knowledge and we teach them as much as we can in the year that we have them. We're working on an internship program where the students will go out and be on a job site if they take a Carpentry 2 program. Internship is going to be a, a big deal and a great deal for students. They're going to have the opportunity to actually do some investigation. If they want to be an electrician, they can do an internship with an electrical 
company, uh, a plumbing company. They could do work for a general contractor, all kinds of areas. That, that's going to be really exciting for the students. I, I tell them where the house is, we go visit the house, and I say, for the rest of your life, you can say, I was part of that house. I have, I always say you have blood, sweat, and tears in every house, and they're finding out that they do, and they really enjoy it. Our classroom is really here. We're out here every day working on different areas, and it's exciting for the kids to work on hands-on stuff. Uh, if you want to learn about this stuff, then I would say definitely do it, because you'll learn a lot. There's a ton of stuff, I mean, just how to set up a wall to how to lay out even just the normal foundation, so definitely a whole bunch that you learn. I had a lot of students in the carpentry programs over the years. I'd say over half of them have gone into the construction trades. Some as business owners, uh, some as uh, salesmen for lumber products, different areas in the construction trade. I tell every student, in, in August I say, there's nothing here. In May, look what you've accomplished. And for high school students, they do a really, really good job. The uh, building inspector says we do as good a job as anybody in the industry. about the computer hardware that goes into each case. We learn about the software that goes onto the computer so it does the tasks that we need it to do. And we start from the very beginning and we take the computer all the way apart. We learn about all the components that go inside the case. And then from there we start building custom systems. We start doing a lot of repair work and troubleshooting on systems that might uh, family members might have and that sort. But it's a lot of fun. We have taken computers apart all the time and we just want to learn more about the computers. Kind of learning the components of computers and just kind of being immersed in technology from today. We have worked on installing virtual machines onto computers. Um, we have rebuilt and put back together um, cases and motherboards and just lots of very hands-on um, exploring. So the students that get into this class are the students that really want to just learn more about and are inquisitive about uh, networks and computer hardware. And so they take this class and then they take the second semester class which is computer networking. And then they go from there and they learn how to um, make their own home networks. They learn how to build um, a small network for maybe a company or a business. Uh, and they uh, are just inquisitive about how maybe gaming systems are built or CAD computers are built or um, video editing systems are built. From this class they go on to a variety of different fields but they always have this background in computers. Um, they can go on into cybersecurity, they go on into computer networking and hardware. Um, they even just go on into computer engineering. They're not limited in any way. Instead, it, it kind of opens up their minds to all the different things that we use computers for. I hope to use this information and go to DSU for network security. This is a really just yeah great introduction to it, and I needed to learn as much as I can before I just before I want to choose something to go into. I think everybody should have a background in technology because it's ever growing and. It's going to be a part of our lives, no, whether we like it or not, and it's a great career field. So I think everyone should be considering it, because anybody can do it. You're not just reading a book. Um, they're making sure that you're prepared for the real world. Yeah. program here at CTE follows the Pro Start curriculum which was put together by the National Restaurant Association to help train students who want to go into a field in culinary arts, restaurant management, business management, things along that line. 
but it also is a great opportunity for students who want to learn how to cook for themselves, learn kitchen skills if they're going to work in the kitchen through high school, get their Serve Safe certifications, and just learn how to work together as a team. They're going to learn their knife skills, how to handle knives, how to do the different cuts that they're going to be asked to perform on a job. They're going to learn how to use all the different types of equipments, the ranges, the stovetops, the grills. They're going to learn how to use the mixers, all the things that they would see, again, on a job site. Um, everything here is industrial grade. They get to select their recipes most of the time. There's a few labs where I select for them, but most of the time they're finding their own recipes online, giving them that freedom, allowing them to actually evaluate if a recipe is good or not. This semester we do it every once in a while. Well, they'll have like a chop challenge and they have to create from their own, but second semester, once they gain those basic skills to a higher extent, then they do a lot more creative freedom at that point. We're learning about the utensils in the kitchen because there's a lot of them and how to use them. We do fun labs. Cooking with other people lets you get used to like your surroundings and the stuff around you. My favorite lab was the jalapeno bacon macaroni lab. It's not just for students who want to go in a restaurant. It's going to give you a leg up if you're going into the food service industry. But even those students who just want to have a basic understanding of cooking from scratch, how a food service facility works, and just those basic skills that they could use later in their life, it's a great opportunity for any of those students. We also partner with business and industry. We work with Hyde V. We work with different chefs from around the area to come in and showcase to the students as well as we go out to their facilities and see what kind of opportunities there are out there that are just not only restaurants but even within the private sector of business. There's so many new opportunities for food service. It's fun meeting new people and learning new things about food because usually people say that they only know how to make macaroni or toast. Here you can make like elegant dishes. So yeah, it's pretty fun. program at the CTE Academy is a hands-on program. It's problem-based, so students aren't just learning content. They're applying the content they're learning in the class to solve problems in a really exciting way. The students that take engineering courses are really looking for a way to supplement their math and science classes. Typically, the students really enjoy um, their math and science classes that they take at the home school, and they're looking for a way to enhance that experience. We do a lot of things you'd think real engineers would do. We do a lot of projects, we do 3D modeling, we do a lot of math, and so learn the ins and outs of engineering. It gives me like good experience, I'd say, so I'd be ready for college if I'd go and decide to do engineering. The possibilities for students who take engineering courses here at the CTE Academy are really unlimited. They, many of our students will go on to um, pursue engineering degrees. We also have students who pursue degrees such as um, electronics, mechatronics, um, automation, so many different high need area fields. I'm uh, working on creating an assembly line for uh, to make a wooden box essentially in the fastest amount of time possible. That still works. So our engineering courses are rigorous. They will definitely provide a challenge to the student who's looking to be further engaged and, and look to do more than just the, the standard high school experience. Those are all stuff that engineers do. They go through projects they have to do and they have to 3D print, 3D models that they make. The students that are successful in completing the Project Lead the Way courses can earn college credit from our partnering universities all across the nation. If you're ready for it, it's a really good course to take to see if you actually want to be an engineer.
class, we do lots of hands-on activities. We teach them the CNA skills. So that's why our room is full of lots of beds and kind of looks like the inside of a nursing home or a hospital. We also teach them anatomy and physiology. Um, and then we start working on pathophysiology, which is how the body works, um, the parts of the body, but also the diseases of the body. We also do um, CPR training in here. We also do first aid training in here. Um, and then in second semester, if they get a C or above them first semester, they get to go to internships. So they spend five weeks in a hospital, five weeks in a nursing home, um, where they learn and practice their skills that they've learned in the classroom, but they also learn what does the inside of healthcare actually look like, and they're in areas that they're interested in. Um, and then at the end of uh, second semester, they're able to sit for something called the CNA certification exam. And so if they pass that, um, they can end our class with a CPR certification, first aid certification, and a CNA certification. This class helps prepare us for a CNA test, and so we can kind of get our foot in the door for medical careers. And if we want to progress to being a nursing student or doing nursing and doctoring, we can do that. I took this class because I really want to do obstetrics and gynecology nursing, and so I thought being a CNA would really help me learn my basic skills and it would be a lot cheaper than having to learn it through college. One of the most probably exciting things that we get to do is our surgeries, because we kind of get to eat our patients right now. We did a Twinkie, so we learned the parts of the abdomen, and then we did a Snickers, so we learned the parts of the skin, like the dermis and the epidermis and the hypodermis. The healthcare world, and that can be anything from the careers within healthcare that people automatically think of. They think of physicians, they think of nurses, but health careers also touches on all the different therapies, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech, respiratory, child life staff, surgical techs, dietary, veterinary medicine, anything within healthcare. We explore those careers. We uh, learn some of the basic sciences that all of those careers need to have knowledge of, and then basic patient care skills such as making a bed. Healthcare is one of the most rapidly expanding professions within the United States today and predictions are that's going to continue. People still, even in 2017, are interested in working with people and the, the basic interest in helping someone, which is what healthcare is all about. We really do step into people's lives when they're at some of the lowest points in their lives and then again at some of the happiest points in their lives. I really enjoy it. It's a really unique experience just because it's a unique course in its own and you get to learn so much details. I think I like about it because it's all about one course, it's not just a broad spectrum. The teachers are really amazing and if you're having trouble they're totally there to help you and back you up. I feel like there's so many jobs you could take, it wouldn't hurt to go and try you know, a medical field and try to test the waters. Our program at CTE is the Human Services Career Cluster. We spend a lot of time working with students to try and find a path for them, trying to explore what their skills are, their interest areas are, looking at some of their abilities. We even play some silly games trying to determine some of their skills, such as memory or agility and such. We spend quite a bit of time with our career job shadows. Our students really are interested in all kinds of different career fields. So in human services, we work on employer-employee relationship skills, what makes them stand out from other people, how they can fill out a job application and or make a resume so that they can accent some of their talents and skills. We work a lot on interviewing skills. This seems to be what right now a lot of employers are looking for, so we hit that really heavy in this class. Job shadowing at different places where we want to potentially like in that career field, like work in that career field. It's actually been an eye-opener to see that I want to be into the medical field and it definitely narrowed everything down to what I want to do. I'm actually going to be job shadowing a teacher at Robert Frost in the fourth grade level because I want to see if I like working with kids. We do actually do a lot of group activities and we do a lot of online assessments that will help us to like dictate what career section we want to go into. We have sophomores, juniors, and seniors predominantly, some who have had no jobs, some looking for jobs. 
some who are applying to colleges and still trying to determine what route to go. That's what we have for human services, people helping people and all kinds of jobs out there. I learned a lot more about who I am just taking this class. I teach the Integrated English program here at CTE, and that consists of speech, composition, technical reading and writing, and college prep English. The students come into the building for their content courses, which could be anything from media to engineering, biomed, aviation, automotive, welding. We offer Integrated English so the student can take an English class at the same time, gaining credit for graduation and how that works is mostly online. Of course, you can't give a speech online, and so what I do is I work one-on-one -on -one with students, pull them out of their classes when they're here in the building in order to facilitate speech giving as well as work on composition and other assignments if they need special instruction. A lot of times I do get students coming and asking me questions and we'll sit down one-on-one -on -one and work through whatever problem they may have. It works out really well for the fact that rather than teaching to a group, I'm able to meet the student individually and focus on the needs that they have. One of the perks about having this program is I don't assign topics. More often than not, we ask that they do their content based upon what course they're here in the building for. So for example, later on today for a demonstration speech, I will go into the automotive department and watch a student remove a dent from a fender, showing me the skill that they're learning in this content course, but yet fulfilling that speech requirement at the same time. I was trying to look up how to get that credit in, but at the same time, also have classes for my physics and science classes, and this allowed me to get the classes I wanted, but also get the class I needed done. So last year I had both engineering classes, IDE and POE, which actually was really nice because all the speeches I had to do for class, I actually got Ms. Machine to credit that for speech. And then I'm also taking computer hardware, so whenever I do a technical reading and writing, I can use that and use it for an assignment as well. So those transfer over. That gives me more time at school to focus on my other assignments and doesn't make it where I have to sit in a boring class that I just can't stand. <laughs> So this course that's coming is going to be about robotics, technology, and just learning how to be creative with uh, technology that you might not be familiar with. We really wanted students to have the opportunity to just be creative in their coursework as well as learning material that feeds into other fields like engineering, like computer technology, uh, networking, programming, those types of maker type fields and so we started with the idea of let's make something that will be really fun, have a lot of energy to it, a little destructive, a little constructive and this is what we came up with. Well really this class is for any student who is creative and is looking for a place where they can use their interests and their creativity um, combined with technology to make really cool things. So it kind of combines art with science and technology. So this is a prop for a friend of mine from a video game called For Honor. It's actually one of the characters, Apollyon. It's her um, signature weapon. And I figured I'd just design it for him because he just asked me to and I figured I love doing stuff like this so I might as well. I looked around and I found some images and I used those as references. And then I used Autodesk Inventor, which is the CAD software we use here to design some of the parts. And I've started with um, designing the hilt and I'm gonna move on to the blade eventually. And after I design the parts in Inventor, I take it over to our 3D printers and we can 3D print these really well. We got really good machines here. They allow us to make really good 
parts. I guess I've always liked making things. I mean, seeing something start from an idea and go to a physical thing is really cool in my mind. The fact that I can do it here and they'll provide the tools to do it here and um, I can do it for a friend makes it even better just because it makes you feel good about it. We can think of it, we're just going to throw it in there. If kids have interest in something specifically, we're going to be taking those interests as well and making special projects out of them. This course requires no prerequisites, so students can come in and take this course with zero background in technology, engineering. Um, we, we will take you from you know where you are right now, and this class is really you know designed to accommodate any grade level of students. So we are happy to see students from ninth and tenth grade all the way up to twelfth grade students who just are excited to create and learn. Basically, CTE is like a dream come true to me because I can get just about anything I want here and do just about anything I want here with it. The Media Arts program here at CTE is a digital arts program. We have a variety of digital arts studies including music, digital animation, filmmaking, television, and graphic design. Media Arts gets kids from all kinds of backgrounds. We get kids that are interested in sports, kids that are interested in cartoons, kids that love music, kids that love film. One of the great things I think about Media Arts is that it's applied to so many other areas of study. You can be a digital artist and love cars and work for a car magazine. You can be a digital artist and love sports and work for a sports channel. Everything in media, the media department, music, broadcasting, digital animation, filmmaking, this intro class is what introduces you to all of that and for you to find out what you like the best. Throughout the year we make um, videos, we make action videos, we make short films, we do reality shows, we do commercials, we do short um, animations, we do superhero animations, we do 3D modeling, 3D animation. There's a variety of music projects including group bands, singular projects, solo projects. It gets you prepared for the classes you want to take and so you don't end up wasting money on a class you never will have use for. So taking this class will help you find what you really love and your passion for your career choice. <laughs> Students that go through the media arts program here at CTE can go into a variety of studies. They can go into college, of course, pursue a two or a four year degree, but most of them will have enough skills to get an entry level position in some sort of digital media arts, whether it's in television or graphic design or as an animator, they should be able to obtain an entry level position with the software skills they acquire here. All the equipment, the hardware, the software that we use here in the Media Arts Department, CTE, is industry standard from the Adobe Suite to our lights, to our cameras, to our whole broadcast studio. All of it is industry standard and it's going to prepare kids to work in the media industry as soon as they get out of CTE and they'll hopefully be more prepared for college in some sort of media field as well. It's different, it's unique, everyone in this class is their own and very creative and you get a like share and express yourself the way you want to. It also helped with my career choice in life. I actually enjoy making film more. It's an amazing experience. Sioux Falls CT Academy is really an all-inclusive event. There isn't a single process we don't do here. We can do everything from MIG, stick, TIG welding, all the way to actually building um, small projects. We do blueprint reading to actually enhance those projects. By the time they're done here, they should be able to take a blueprint and actually do a full build. Um, by the time they're actually done with all three classes of mine, we really encourage them to be a part of the community and take some up internship opportunities, develop their own skills within those internships, and eventually gain um, long-time career employment. A lot of our kids um, will go right into their industry, and then those businesses can then take and 
you know, they can cherry pick the best certification for that student and then they can go ahead and finish them up. And usually that can happen within the first couple, three months of employment because um, they're actually fairly well off. Instead of being a year down the road for employment, it's usually a couple of months. We made the fire pits for the raffle. Um, we're cutting out with the plasma cutter and um, welding it all together, uh, grinding the welds down and painting it so we can get all raffled off. We even made one for the stampede so we can raffle that off too and kind of represent CTD Academy. Every company's going to have you probably build something. So you need to know how to do your math, do your blueprints, be able to read them, and be able to cut things a certain length and be able to weld together properly and structurally sound. Tested how strong our weld was, so we needed an inch wide piece of metal that was seven inches long. We need two of those and then we would weld together so it'd be like this, like an L. Then we had to flatten it, put it in the machine, and the machine tried to break it apart. If it broke where your weld was, then the weld failed. But if it broke another other piece of the metal, then it passed. Basically everything that we're doing here is what we're gonna be doing at MTI. So you're just kind of prepping us for all that stuff. Everything that you see here is something you're gonna directly relate to your industry. And everyday work after this the program, we like to see kids. If you want to take a two-year school and go on to this, you're more than prepared for it. For those kids that not necessarily think school isn't their choice, they can still go to do an apprenticeship and still make very good money right away. There's no way you couldn't be happy with it. Either way, you're going to learn something. If you're going to be good at one type of welding, MIG, stick, or TIG, then there's career fields for any of those types of welding, and you can make pretty good money. Mm -hmm.